Today at six, new laws on crime, housing and smoking are unveiled in the King's speech. The government's priorities have been outlined with pomp and ceremony at the state opening of Parliament. My government will, keep, will act to keep communities safe from crime, antisocial behaviour, terrorism and illegal migration. Hello and welcome to the BBC News at six. Charles III has delivered his first King's speech to Parliament, outlining the government's priorities. Among the announcements, there was a focus on crime, with tougher sentences for those who commit the worst crimes and more rights for victims. Confirmation of a phased ban on smoking in England means everyone who's now 14 or younger will never be able to legally buy a cigarette. New licences will be awarded for oil and gas projects in the North Sea. On housing, there's to be a ban on leaseholds for new houses and a promise to make it easier for existing homeowners to buy their freeholds in England and Wales. There will also be a law to allow driverless cars on Britain's roads. But the King warned of difficult decisions ahead. Our political, our political editor, Chris Mason, has this report. Hats and stockings, precedent and custom. A spectacle long before there were cameras to capture it, wherever they now hover. This, the fanciest fancy dress party you'll ever see, illustrates something vital about how we're governed. The pageantry of monarchy, yes, but ultimately the power of Parliament. The common speaker's outfit, quite the assembly. You ready? At every ritual, there are those performing their role for the first time. Today, that was true of the Prime Minister and the King and the Queen. The playlist at the state opening of Parliament sounds and looks like this. Fanfare and symbolism. The door to the Commons slammed in the face of an official to underline its independence. Close the door! And look closely if you're a good lip reader. Political adversaries share small talk as they walk to the House of Lords to listen. The King began by reflecting on the loss of his mum and then read out the government's plans, including inviting companies every year to apply to drill oil and gas under the North Sea. This bill will support the future licensing of new oil and gas fields helping the country to transition to net zero by 2050 without adding undue burdens on households. A central theme of today was crime. In England and Wales, there'll be whole life sentences for the worst murders, rapists won't be released early, and reasonable force will be justified to try to make sure defendants turn up to hear their sentencing. My government will, keep, will act to keep communities safe from crime, antisocial behaviour, terrorism and illegal migration. The government also wants to ban young people from smoking. The Scottish and Welsh governments agree and there's support for it in Northern Ireland too. My government will introduce legislation to create a smoke-free generation by restricting the sale of tobacco so that children currently aged 14 or younger can never be sold cigarettes. Order! Hours later, the roaring return of familiar politics and a tussle over the rightful owner of a powerful word. And above all, this King's speech delivers change. Change in our economy, change in our society, change in our communities. It takes long-term decisions for a brighter future. The Labour leader claimed recent by-election wins show it is he who represents change. Victories that have reduced the party opposite now nearly 14 years in power to the desperate spectacle of claiming it offers change away from itself. <laughs> Today's address shows just how ridiculous that posturing is. The debate over the King's speech is just beginning and will dominate the coming days here. What we so badly need to see is the powers over our economy, the powers over energy policy, the powers over employment law transferred from this place yeah, yeah. to Hollywood. The people of our great country, the British people, 
have never been ones to sit back quietly and accept their fate. They won't accept a Conservative Party that is out of touch and out of ideas. They will kick it out of office. Outside, plumed helmets removed, the ceremonial sand swept, the king's horses and carriage now gone. For others, hats still on, more modern transport home. Chris Mason, BBC News at Westminster. Well, let's just take a closer look at some of those announcements today with our health editor, Hugh Pym, climate editor, Justin Rowlatt, and first, our home editor, Mark Easton. With a general election likely in less than a year, the Conservatives have put crime and punishment at the heart of their policy agenda. More whole life orders for murderers, more jail time for sexual offenders and rapists, measures to force convicts to appear in the dock to hear victim statements and sentencing remarks. Many of these measures are not new. There's very little in the way of new detail. We don't know how much they'll actually change things or how much they'll actually cost. What we do know is that prisons in England and Wales have more inmates than ever before and overcrowding is a huge problem. It's easy to say you want to be tough on crime, but there are social and economic consequences you also have to recognise. The main health announcement was a plan to legislate for measures already flagged up, aimed at curbing smoking by future generations. The idea is that the legal age for selling tobacco products and cigarettes, currently 18, will be raised by one year every year from 2027. That means that anyone who's 14 years old now or under that age will never legally be able to buy those products. And there'll be measures aimed at cracking down on youth vaping with a UK-wide consultation on that. As for the NHS in England, nothing new, though campaigners are saying they're disappointed that a mental health bill which they had expected was not included. The King would have made parts of today's speech through gritted teeth, some of his friends told me today. He announced plans to issue oil and gas licences for projects in the North Sea every year, for example. Now, that would have been uncomfortable for a man who has spent his entire adult life campaigning on environmental issues. Another section he may have found tricky was the pledge to continue to lead on tackling climate change and to hold other countries to account for their environmental commitments. That is because there's been a distinct change of tone on the climate issue in the UK in the last couple of months. The government has dialed back on policies, including pushing back the ban on petrol and diesel cars from 2030 to 2035. Now, the government said it's met all its carbon reduction targets to date and expects to continue to do so. And in today's King's speech, it reaffirmed its commitment to reduce emissions to net zero by 2050. Well, let's just get the thoughts of our political editor, Chris Mason, about all of this. Where does this leave the government tonight, Chris? John, I think today felt like a ceremonial comma, a punctuation mark in an autumn of familiar political sentences, an assembly, if you like, of the architecture of planned new laws to make existing plans law, if at all possible, from the government's perspective, rather than the flash of new ideas and things we had not heard about before. There were some things that weren't mentioned. So uh, a planned ban on so-called conversion therapy, trying to change someone's gender identity or sexual orientation, uh, was not in there. And what was in there was something that felt very Rishi Sunak, taking things one step at a time and things that he's particularly passionate about, like that smoking ban uh, in England and the reform of post-16 education in England. The big question, though, is where it leaves him and where it leaves his party. There are some Conservative MPs who fret that this simply won't be enough to change the political weather, because one of the other familiar political sentences around here is that gathering sense of the likelihood of the Conservatives losing the next election. Uh, and those on the Conservative benches are desperately looking for something that might help prevent that and might worry that today won't do enough to help. Thanks, Chris. Chris Mason. Now, we'll turn our attention to the situation in the Middle East. Let's head to Clive Myrie, who's in southern Israel tonight. Clive. 